Hello everyone, my name is Kirill, you are on the Auto Advisor channel. Today we will talk about a very interesting system, which increases the power of the engine, but it is not a turbocharger. It turns out such systems? So, this system is called an intake manifold with variable geometry. Now I have a sample of the intake manifold in my studio, from the Mercedes engine. This is a 6-cylinder engine with about 250 horsepower. This intake manifold is not cheap, and this engine is atmospheric. Our task today is to understand how this thing, how this manifold increases engine power and why it doesn't use a turbocharger. Let's put the collector aside and I will explain to you in simple terms how it all works. Let's say this is the cylinder of an engine, which sucks in the air. Let's say that the air in here is made up of balloons. These are some balls that run through the manifold and get inside the cylinder. These balls successfully run, nothing prevents them, but at some point the intake manifold closes. That is, there is a wall and the front balls of course crash into this wall and the rear had continued to run, because nobody told them that the obstacle ahead. When the rear start to run on the front, the large number of balls in front creates an increase of pressure. Because there has been an increase in pressure, and there is a little pressure on the back, then the next moment these balls begin to move in the opposite direction, and thus create air pressure drops in the intake manifold. Approximately like this, the particles move back and forth and at the same time occurs an increased pressure or air rarefaction in front of the valve. All these pressure drops continues for a while, until the intake valve reopens. When the intake valve is opened, fresh air must be pushed back into the engine. So, if you open this valve at the moment of the air dilution, that is, when the particles are moving backwards, it will interfere, because the particles themselves will be moving away from the engine, and we will need to push them inside the engine. Conversely, if we open this valve at the moment when there is a lot of particles and an increased pressure, this effect will help to push more air into the engine. So, intermediate conclusions. Has an intake manifold. When the air is sucked in and the intake valve closes abruptly, there are pressure drops inside it, and there is either an increased pressure or air rarefaction in front of the valve. So, if you open the valve at a time of increased pressure, this effect helps to suck in air and push more air into the engine cylinder, and thus increase its power. And now we have a task before us, is to synchronize valve opening and pressure changes to get more air into the engine. The valve opening rate depends on the speed of the crankshaft. The faster the engine spins, the more this valve rotates. Everything is clear here, and the frequency of pressure changes depends on the cross-section and length of the intake manifold. It follows a simple conclusion, that the different roofs, the cross-section of the intake manifold should be different in order to change the frequency of these pressure changes, so a system called intake manifold with variable geometry was invented. There are several ways to change the cross-section of the intake manifold. The first simple way is to change its length. At lower revs the collector has a longer length, at higher revs shorter in order to allow pressure changes to occur faster. The second way to change the geometry of the intake manifold is to change its cross-section. That is, at lower revs the section of a larger diameter, at higher revs the section of a smaller diameter. And now let's move on to practice. Here I have a collector whose length and the diameter of the section changes. Let's first look at how the length changes. By the external shape of the manifold, you can see which way the air passes. Air is sucked in through the central opening and further in a spiral way into the cylinders. Inside this spiral there are two ways. A longer way 
and still inside there is a shorter way. There is a special flap that switches the air movement mode on a long way or a short way. On the other hand, there is a drive that controls this flap, which in turn changes the way the air moves, is short or is long. Especially in this model, there are two flaps that are responsible for three cylinders respectively. This is the right three cylinders and here it is the flap. Where is she? There she is. Now I'm going to move it. And on the other side there is the same symmetrical flap. I'm going to move it too. Let's try to see what's on the back, on the side of the entrance. How are these flaps moving there? Let me try to move them. So we looked at the very first way, the flaps open and then the length of the path the air passes through changes. Now, the second way to change geometry is to change the cross-section of the manifold itself. There is a second flap, here in the middle. There is a lever there, and that's how it moves. Come on, move! Oh, this side, in such a way. As you can see, with this lever, which is in the middle, you can open the flaps that are on the sides. This one and this one. Let's look at it from the back and see how it works. As you can see by the operation of these side flaps, the area of the section through which air enters the cylinders of the engine changes. By the way, if you need such a thing, you know where to buy it. Be sure to go to our online store, link will be in the description. So, the conclusions are. When you close the valve in the intake manifold, there are pressure drops, so if you synchronize the closing frequency of this valve and the shape of the manifold, this fluctuation help us push more air into the engine cylinders of the engine. And the more air we push in, the higher the engine power. So the system with variable intake manifold geometry, as it were, replaces the turbocharger. The advantages of this system are the simplicity. That is, there is almost nothing to break, there is just a piece of metal of a certain shape, of course. And there are movable flaps, which, as I said, are two types. Some flaps change the length of the path on which the air moves, and the second flaps change the area of the cross section on which the air passes. Again, this system is only installed on atmospheric engines. It can be either gasoline or diesel, that is, the system with variable geometry intake manifold and turbocharger exclude each other. But in fact there may be nothing at all, neither turbocharger nor this system, you just have a small power conventional engine. Basically, that's all I want to say about this system. I hope you enjoyed the way I explained it, how these particles move, how they push each other, how these flaps open and so on. If you have any questions necessary, write in comments, like and subscribe to our channel. Have a good day and see you soon!